think the name Adrian Gardner, the f first thought that comes to my mind is generosity. Before I speak about the generosity of Adrian, I would like to just give you a short overview as to how I met the man. After I married my husband, we decided to move to Alistair where I worked as a textile designer in a factory. Now, I don't know if people really know where Alistair is in the world, but Alistair is located in the Eastern Cape and it's a tiny little town. It's actually mainly consists of a railway station and a general dealer. And that was where we lived. My husband then met up with Adrian after he started the renovations at Longley Manor. And he worked together with Graham Viney, producing the furniture for the actual lodge. Subsequent to that, he came home one evening and told me that Adrian had obtained another lodge called Lobingula. And he's offered us the opportunity to handle the interior of that lodge. I said to him, but Ivan, you must be crazy. I don't think I could ever do that. And he said, why not? I think we should give it a go. So that was where my career started with Adrian. And that was the very first project that we did together for him. That also happened to be the very first lodge in South Africa to get a five-star grading. After that, Adrian offered me a second job, which I also completed. And then I got a phone call from the man saying, next time you're in Port Elizabeth, please come round to my office. So in those days, we didn't have mobile phones. And I was rather nervous and scared of the man because I thought he was this business tycoon. And who am I? It's this girl from the small town Alistair young, inexperienced. Nevertheless, I came back to Port Elizabeth and walked into his office. He told me to sit down and handed me an envelope. And he said, take this. I think you need to go and learn. And inside the envelope were two tickets for a 10 day trip to London. And he set me up with one of the world's best decorators in London on a 10-day trip, which was an experience of a lifetime. Needless to say, I came back from London with a complete new vision, and he opened my eyes to the world of interior design. And that was how my career started, together with Adrian, who's got a passion for art, a huge passion for beautiful things, things that are aesthetically pleasing to the eye and a very, very fine eye for detail. So I started doing more and more projects on Chamwari as they grew from strength to strength. There was the one lodge, upon the next, upon the next. Slowly but surely, I got to know him very well. Adrian was always traveling whilst we were staying behind having to do the work. But oftentimes I'd get a phone call out of the blue saying, where are you? And I'd say, well, I'm somewhere in the bush or at a lodge doing this or that. And he would say, well, I need you to come onto the first, get yourself onto the first plane and come to Paris because I've seen something here that I think you need to see. And I'd say, but Adrian, I don't have a visa. He'd say, well, make a plan, get yourself a visa. So that's what life is about. Life is about learning, life is about growing, and this is what I find most fascinating about this generous man. The man who has decided to share his vision, not only in recovering and bringing the land, natural land back to its beauty, not only bringing the animals back, but also bringing the human beings and the people of the Eastern Cape together, providing jobs for a multitude of people. And the reason why I'm saying this is, there is always a story behind the scenes that people are not aware of. It sounds very glamorous to say that, you know, you're opening this five-star lodge, or you're opening a hotel up in Africa, of which he's done many, but 
what most people don't realize is that each and every hotel that Adrian and Mantis has opened all over the world, no matter which country it is, all the items that are procured, that are manufactured, that are sewn, that are designed, they all come out of South Africa and mainly out of the Eastern Cape. So therefore, there are hundreds and thousands of people that benefit from all these projects. Today we're sitting here in number five, which is a pretty unique hotel based on the Art Deco theme. So Adrian is very, very passionate about Art Deco. And when he obtained the property, the brief was, Mourette, I would like to have an Art Deco interior. That meant that I had to do quite a bit of research on Art Deco. But I also realized that Art Deco is not everybody's cup of tea. So therefore, we decided to introduce it in a very subtle way so that you can pick up the nuances, you can pick it up in the furniture, you can pick it up in the wallpapers, certain design elements and aspects. Yet, even if you're not passionate about Art Deco, people from all over the world can walk into this property and feel at ease and feel that even though it's not exactly their taste or style, they feel comfortable, they can feel at home. The other, of course, the other aspect that makes this property even more unique is the unique collection of art. The art within the property is hand-selected. Everything was specifically selected for a reason. There was a huge investment made into local, buying art locally from Eastern Cape artists, supporting the Eastern Cape people in the first place, and then venturing out further into other parts of South Africa and buying South African art, celebrating the people of our country and paying homage to the artists that have passed on and the ones that are still alive. And as you walk into the entrance door, you will notice the massive William Kentridge with the rhinos, which is so symbolic of what Adrian stands for, the wildlife, the rhino, yet it found a home in a five-star boutique hotel with an Art Deco interior. So I suppose that is what my life is all about. My life with Adrian has been at times very stressful. There's been huge challenges. It's been a learning curve, but it's something that I will cherish and be grateful forever till the day I die.